Hi everyone, welcome to episode 116 of the Cherry at Heart podcast. I'm Sandra and this is a podcast uh, featuring crochet, knitting and sewing for the most part. Um, you will find the show notes for my podcast on my blog which is cherryheart.co.uk and that's where I'll put the names of the things that I talk about and the yarns and patterns and such and likes. Um, you can use video chapters to navigate this blog. Just click on the uh, little bar at the bottom of the screen if you move your mouse up to hover over it or you can use the ta uh, timestamps in the down bar below. I'll also put the show note link in the down bar below. Should have said that earlier. Um, you can find me on Instagram as Sandra Cherry HRT. That's where I'm most active. And elsewhere around the web, I'm Cherry Heart. Um, so that's uh, all you need to know, really. So how are you? Um, I can't even remember last time I podcast. I can't remember if it was a couple of weeks ago, like it should have been, or whether I skipped another week. I can't even remember. Time goes too quickly, doesn't it? Um, but yeah, I hope you've been keeping okay. It's... I don't know. It's a weird it's a weird old thing, isn't it? Um, if you're watching this at some point in the future, because I know sometimes people go back and catch up, I'm talking about the Russia-Ukraine situation. And... Yeah. I don't know. There aren't really words, are there? It's just horrible um yeah so i think i don't know if it's that that's left me in a bit of a funk or if it's just me but i haven't sort of really been picking a lot up lately i've been doing little bits but i sort of pick it up and do something and then i just end up putting it down and leaving it and yeah it's strange times again isn't it in the world um but let's crack on the first thing i was going to do a little bit of sort of well, i was going to say podmin but i don't know what it is i don't know that it is podcast related admin really it's more sandra related admin so i was just going to give you a very brief little health update because i know people have been asking me about it and i sort of haven't said a lot since i initially spoke about it a few podcasts ago but just to let you know um i'm still fine the situation is still ongoing um, but we are making progress with the tests and whatnot, and they've, I think they've tested everything they need to test now and they've found what they need to find. Um, so it will just be a case of me having some surgery to sort that out at some point, hopefully quite soon, but we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, so I'm just, again, I'm just trying to do, I'm okay, but I'm just trying to make sure I do what I need to do to keep on top of my symptoms so I can kind of manager level like you know i'm kind of running at about 80 percent really <laughs> so as long as i take it easy and do all the things i need to do hopefully i can sort of keep that kind of level because that's that's manageable and that's fine um but yeah hopefully soon a little bit more you know what's the word hopefully i'll be above 80 percent again soon let's hope so so yeah, just to fill you in on what's happening. So I'm okay, but you know, it's ongoing. <laughs> um, so now let's get on to the crafty bits without further ado. Like I say, I'm not sure I've got too much to show you, but where to begin? Oh, let's begin with this. Let's begin with this. Um, so this is, well, I've done a little video of me prancing, so I'll pop that in quick. Yeah, so hopefully you've seen it reasonably clearly there. So I'm wearing it now. Um, this is the first time I've worn it. I've been saving it for you. Um, so I'll just quickly go through the details I have mentioned before, but it's this pattern, the Pyrrhic Vest. That's who it's by. I'll pop that in show notes as well, in case you didn't manage to grab that or see that in time. Um, the yarn I used is Drops Nord, which is that one in colourway 707 the number and 
I won't say the needles that I knit it on because I can't remember. But I did go up a size from the pattern, I do know that because I tend to knit a little bit tighter than gauge but if I go up a needle size I find that works out just nicely and I've got perfect gauge on this. I didn't do a gauge swatch, I know, but I've sort of, I know you can't tell exactly because different yarns blah blah blah, but yeah I tend to sort of find if I go up a needle size I'm kind of alright. Um, anyways, but yes I got perfect gauge so I'm very happy with that. Um, and I really like, I only gave it a very light blocking but it looks nice and smooth which I'm quite happy with because it was a little bit, you know I had a few little kinky sort of looking stitches going on before but I've blocked it and it's laying out nicely now so I'm very happy with that. Um, what else can I tell you about it? It's got a nice, um, what's the word, a tubular cast off to get a nice sort of stretchy neck. Um, and there was a choice of two necks but I just went for the straight ribbing one. Oh and it's got a nice little um, slip stitch detail down the side here which I must admit I didn't particularly enjoy doing at first because I I think I sort of messed up and sometimes when I was slipping I, was, I knit and sometimes when I was supposed to be knitting I slipped. I, but after a while I could kind of tell what I was doing a bit more I was okay but at first when I was coming around to it I couldn't tell which row I was on. Um, yeah so that was a little bit sort of I don't want to be thinking about this <laughs> I just want to go round and round and round now so I almost wish I sort of hadn't really bothered with that because I don't think it adds a lot or because it's like it's um, there's some pearl stitches as well if I'd just done it as a little ribbing panel I don't think the fact that it's slip stitches makes that big a deal but that's the only thing and I would change if I, well that's not the only thing I would change if I made it again. That's one thing I might change if I made it again, but if I made it again I would change the neckline. Now when I started this I intended to, I spoke about this before as well, I intended to change the neckline but I wasn't, when I was following the pattern I wasn't quite sure what I was making until I'd sort of got these bits down and then I was like oh okay I can see how this is coming together but by which time I'd already started the decreases I think for the neck so I just carried on as per the pattern but I do wish that I brought it down a bit more and come down a little bit lower with the neckline and in fact actually even more than it could be a little bit wider all round really I sort of want the neckline a bit like that's kind of what I want <laughs> for the neckline to be honest just a bit more open all round so yeah I mean I could block the living hell out of it and one, if, but I think that might make the sleeve areas look a bit funny. I think this would need shortening up to compensate if I did that. I'm not sure I've got the skills to do that to be honest. Anyway, what I think might work even better than lowering the neckline slightly is making it a v-neck. Now that I've, I wasn't sure when I was looking at patterns whether I wanted a round neck or a v-neck. Now I've knit this and I've got it on, I'm like ah, I wanted a v-neck. Now I know. So I think if I came down slightly more, if I made this again, and then just came down to a V, so come down and then there, I think I would be ha even happier. I like it, I'm happy with it, I love the yarn, I enjoyed the pattern, I love the fit I've got, everything good apart from I really do kind of want a slightly different neckline. <laughs> kind of a bit more open like I say, a bit more open. Or even just there you go yeah that's what I want I want it to be a v-neck but there you go you live and learn don't you so but I do like the way you sort of get this it's not a sleeve exactly but just the way it comes over the shoulders a bit so you get a little bit of a sleevey type looser effect rather than it being too vest toppy I wanted it to be definitely more sleeveless jumper than vest top if you know what I mean if that makes any sense so yeah that's all I have to say about that <laughs> so that's one finished item let's show you my other finished item now you haven't seen this before I started this it's practically the only thing I have actually been working on over since we last spoke really uh, so once I finished this I cast on a pair of socks and because I can knit the socks so much on autopilot it was the only thing that I would just sort of pick up and do a few rows on. I still kept putting it down but it was the most sort of consistent thing I reached for. But now I've made these as well. So I can't reach for these anymore. But anyway, 
let's show them to you so socks um and this was let me show you the yarn i think i showed you the yarn as an incoming goodie a couple of podcasts ago possibly um and it's a wool barn sock set which is coming undone so that's the main color there and that is called harbor sky and then the little mini that came with it was no focus on the mini sea salt um so yeah that was a really lovely set and i immediately saw that as socks and i immediately saw it as socks with um you know the contrasting toe and heel and then i thought i would do my little just one row of like so i cast on with the alternate color and then i immediately switched to the main color which i quite like doing i quite like that just little little poke of something else at the top um and i also wanted a really nice textured pattern so i thought i would try double moss stitch which is what i have done in fact um I don't know why I went for double. I didn't want to just go for regular moss stitch. I went for double moss stitch. Um, I don't know why. I just felt the need to for some reason. And I kind of like how that looks. Quite happy with how that uh, turned out on the thing. So the difference is if you have moss stitch, basically it's a two row repeat and you nip pearl, nip pearl, nip pearl, nip pearl all the way around. And then so the next time you start with a pearl and and knit pearl knit pearl knit so you alternate so where you've knit you pearl where you've pearled you've knitted and that's your two rows you just keep alternating those two the whole way down and then double moss stitch is exactly the same but it's a four stitch repeat so you do your knit pearl knit pearl knit pearl knit pearl then you do another row of knit pearl knit pearl knit pearl and then you swap to your pearl knit pearl knit pearl knit and do two rows of that and so it just gives it a slightly different texture we've got a barking dog situation what's new the dogs that live on the corner are quite barky and noisy and that's fine because most of the time they're in so it doesn't last very long and you know she'll have them in again but when they are in the garden they are quite noisy so you know dogs eh um yeah so what else can i tell you about that so this is basically my vanilla pattern which is my pick and mix socks and i just do a few variations when i knit that so this is the double rib cuff so two knits two pearls i've done a heel flap and gusset and i did my um like eye of partridge style flap because i thought it would complement this which I think it does quite nicely and then I did my I think I just called it rounded toe in the pattern and so the only thing I've changed is literally this stitch pattern which I've subbed in instead of the patterns that are in the knit no the pick and mix socks pattern but the rest of the instructions are all from my pick and mix socks so yeah, I'm happy with those. So this was a gift. This yarn was a gift from my lovely friend, Sam of Betsy Makes. And I'm going to have these as a pair of nice, snuggly bed socks. Because as soon as I saw the yarn, that's what I thought of. So yeah, I was looking forward to casting on those and making them. So I'm glad I've got them now. There might still be a few cold days where I could take advantage of them. We've actually had a couple of mild ones here now. Probably the weather sensed that I had finished these and immediately went, hmm, sunshine. That'll annoy her. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, and I was keeping it all in this lovely project bag, which is again part of my gift. And this is by, it's so adorable, oh, Coco and Flora is who made that. I couldn't find oh i think i i think they might be on etsy did i put this when i spoke about it last time i don't think they're on instagram though or at least i can find them if they were if they are so yeah so that's really pretty as well so that was fun to do um
okay and the other finished thing isn't new but it is a pattern a pattern in progress well it's not in progress anymore it's a finished pattern so that's why i'm talking about it so um you will know probably um, so this is my painted anemones blanket where I've got these lovely flower motifs um, and they're all framed with a white border on this blanket. Then I started messing around with different borders. I like this sort of double border. So I made these as little doilies. Um, oh, I need to change the battery. I meant to change that before I started, but I forgot. Um, anyway, so I made these. Again, if you were here last time, I was talking about these. So these are little doilies, and I just said about making a pattern for these little changes that I've made. So I have actually done that now, and I've got it up. So these are the doilies. So I just added another couple of rows to finish those off as just a little um, pretty decorative touch for around the house, although... I kind of want to make a blanket with this other border on as well so that's percolating and then I also have done a pot holder version so I've got a couple of here that I did in the Shepier's yarn which is the what I used for the doily versions um, and then I've got some that I did in lovely Starcraft naturals bamboo and cotton so who pretty I love them. Oh, look, earrings. Um, <laughs> little bit flamboyant. Um, yeah, so I've done a pattern for both of those little modifications and I've got a back on here so that you could actually use it as a pot holder. And I, I'm not sure I can bring myself to use mine. They're too pretty. I love these colours too much. Maybe some of the ones where, you know... I'm less absolutely obsessed with the colours. Maybe I could use some of those. Um, yeah, so those are... Uh, so the pattern for those, rather, is up. I have got it on Ravelry. I have got it on Lovecrafts at the moment. So I'll pop the link to uh, my pattern page for those on uh, my show notes. Uh, yeah, so I know some of you were asking me about that, so... I have actually done it now so that's available um, and I'm thinking of popping it up I haven't put it on Etsy yet because I'm really struggling with Etsy <laughs> they're just not a great platform to be on um, and I don't think I mean some people enjoy it and that's great and I just think as a but for a person who does digital sales it's really not great it's clearly a platform aimed at people that want to make something and physically send it out and although it accommodates digital patterns it doesn't really accommodate them very well you can't download them through the app at all it just infuriates people and it's difficult for me to deal with as well and yeah it's just not great so i'm going to look at payhip um i did look at it before but they didn't deal with any of the european fat which um I need um, but they do now so I think I might look at that and then I might start putting some on payhip as another alternative for people so that uh, yeah that's an option so I've held far putting this pattern on Etsy for now and but hopefully I'll get that sort of third option for people via PayPal no payhip at some point so yeah just wanted to let you know where I was on that lovely crochet piles happy days so what else do we have to cover um so works in progress i only have one at the moment well one crochet and two one anyway so it's a crochet project um i talked about this last time so it is making basically a crocheted quilt um, so it's using quilt block designs but I'm crocheting the blocks um, this is my colour palette for it this and lots of lovely white and it's made using these little um, half and half colour change squares along with solid squares so last time I showed you I 
I don't think I've got the two stars. No, so I showed you two slightly different versions of stars um, that I'd mocked up just using a brown yarn. But now I've got a couple... Well, I've decided I'm going for this open star, star style. So um, I think last time I was saying, which shall I go for? So I had one that, like this, the open star, and then I had another one where this white block was also blue to match these. So it was like a solid filled in star but I decided I just like the delicate look of this one in the end so you guys were like saying which ones you prefer I asked you which shall I do and this one slightly edged it um but there were votes for both and I you know I liked both too so it's hard to decide isn't it but this is what I've gone for so I just tried um I thought I'd try it in the actual colours so I've done a blue and pink one and I'm liking how that looks um, yeah, so I need to carry on making more of those. I think what I'll do is I will have, so I've got these solid white squares in the corner, I think each square will have a border, so there'll be one row of solid white squares between those, and then sort of across the top. So um, I'll add those on at some point. I don't, maybe I'll wait till I join all the squares, maybe I'll sort of add them on as I go, I'm not sure. But yeah, I just wanted to see how they looked in the actual colours and I really like them. So I'm going to proceed with that and carry on working my way through these other colours I have in here. I'm a little bit short on blues. I've only got... So this was one mini skein and I also got that amount of other squares out of one mini skein. But the trouble is I haven't got enough here to make a whole another star square so that's a little bit annoying so I don't know what to do about that I've got a little bit of this other blue left whoops so maybe I could make up enough squares to make another and mix these two in they are a little bit different but maybe if I had a few of these mixed in it wouldn't make any difference to know and then I've only got this mini which again will make one square then and I have enough left over but not enough to make another square and I've got a big this big full skein and that's all I've got in this nice light blue area I haven't got many minis in that sort of light blue I've got some sort of tealy sort of um, acre tinted blue ones but I haven't got any that are solid blue Right, sorry about that. My phone was ringing, so I just had to pop off and answer that. Um, so I was, I had no idea what I was talking about actually when I came back to it, but apparently, I've just looked back, apparently I was waffling along about my lack of blue colours. So um, yeah, I've had to look on a few sort of favourite people to see if they've got anything that looks like the colour range that I'm looking for. But I couldn't really see anything, so I'll have to keep an eye out for that, I think. But I've got enough here to be getting on with and maybe when I've got some more squares um, you know I'll, I'll sort of have more of a feel of how much more blue I want. I've also got these pale grey so I might just mix in some grey ones. Let's do some pink ones, blue ones and grey ones. So I think I think it'll work out somehow. I did have a quick look to see if there was any other commercial yarns that might work so I ordered a couple just to sort of see if I might be able to pad it out a little bit with a couple of those so I'll see what those are like as well but yeah it's coming on incredibly slowly and I sat and wove in the ends the many many ends for both of these squares last night and it did take quite a while so I must keep a bit more on top of that I've just been leaving them for the excitement of seeing the uh, stars come together but you know there's four ends per square so I think I need to keep a little bit more on top of it otherwise it'll get a bit soul destroying if there's just too many at the end. But yeah so that's uh, the only thing I've got on the go at the moment apart from a couple of sewing things that are not progressing. Um, 
And then I've just got some incoming goodies to show you. Oh, and I've just realised I've forgotten one, so I've got to get up and interrupt again. I'll go and get it now because I forgot to show you last time and I meant to. So I'm going to run and get it. So I got this lovely package. I ordered some stitch markers from Catherine of Crafting Noon Treats um, and they came in this gorgeous package and I just wanted to show you the whole package because it's just so adorable. So it's this lovely sort of envelope and these lovely pretty papers and she's tied it with a lace ribbon. She's so lovely Catherine. Yeah, and then you open it up and look, she popped a little letter in for me as well, but she's got these gorgeous stitch markers hanging. I'll show you them a bit better, but I just wanted to sort of show you, so we've got some... Look at this, look how it's all decorated with all her lovely... I think she's selling these things in her shop as well now, so... Um, so it's Crafting Noon Treats, Catherine of Crafting Noon Treats I'm talking about. Look! She's put these gorgeous buttons in here. Isn't that so lovely of her? Um, yeah, so she sells gorgeous yarns. She does some lovely yarns, but I think she's now started to branch out and do sort of some other things. So then in this other pocket, that was my little letter. But look how she's got them on these this little envelope card. Isn't that so adorable, but with a little lace to hold them in place? It's so pretty the way she's done it. And then this is a tag that comes out of there. And then she's got her little card on the back. Isn't that so... Oh, the packaging of that, it's just, it was like opening a beautiful, beautiful gift. So let me show you her card. I'll pop a link to her in the show notes as well. But um, yeah, so she's on Instagram and Facebook and Etsy, but it's craftanoontreats.com. If you type that in, you will find her and links to everything, I'm sure. But yeah, and let's show you these gorgeous. So she had these, I think I saw these on her Instagram. They're the beautiful gem stitch markers. Aren't they so pretty? I've been keeping everything in this gorgeous packaging and I haven't actually dared even use them yet so I wanted to keep everything nice to show you but I'm so looking forward to using these aren't they so pretty just little um semi precious stones I suppose or just little sort of polished stones oh it's gone now come back just so pretty yeah, so I love those. So yeah, so as I was saying, Catherine's, I think she's branched out now. So, well, she's doing yarn and she did stitch markers, but she's doing, I think she's selling some of these lovely, these lovely decoupage papers and sort of scrapbooking um, kind of accessories and things as well now. So it's just, I was kind of blown away by it, I have to say. So I just wanted to share that with you. So like this little butterfly, it's kind of sort of added on, so it's kind of been relief. So I think it's things like that that she's selling as well. She's sort of diversified and um, yeah, she's very inspiring, Catherine. She's always sort of trying some new things and sort of experimenting or branching out. And yeah, she's a very inspiring lady and she just does things so beautifully. So that was really, really lovely to receive. Thank you, Catherine, if you're watching. Hello, by the way, if you happen to be watching. But yeah, that was really, really lovely. Um, so there was that. And then I bought some minis. May have to cut it, edit out tissue noises. So let's do a bit of a reveal here, shall we? So this is where I got them from good start right so here we go let's show you what's inside so it's a letterbox minis that she does in this nice box that can just fit through your letterbox and you get five gorgeous minis again i saw these on her instagram i haven't brought any yarn really apart from the whites i was getting for my blanket 
my you know I ordered some different ones to trial out some yarns and then I obviously I bought quite a few whites to do all the background so I needed quite a few balls for that but apart from that I haven't really brought an awful lot of yarn lately and then after that I then happened upon I should stop talking while I'm touching the tissue paper I'll get it out and then I'll talk to you <laughs> So anyway, then I happened upon this lovely selection, which is by Beehive Yarns. Again, another temptation via Instagram. Um, yes, yeah, so this was based on, she's got some Marilyn Monroe pictures that this was based upon. And I just loved all of it. I loved the pictures and I just love this selection of yarns. Beautiful. So yeah, I had those ones as well. But after not buying yarn for almost two years, well not not buying yarn, but practically buying very little yarn at all for two years, I thought that it would be okay to treat myself. So yeah, um, so these are both four ply yarns, sock weight yarns. So this one is in her classic sock, which is 75% merino, 25% nylon, but it feels like it feels like it could have cashmere or something in it but it's so soft sort of the look of it it hasn't but it almost feels like it does and then this one the wool barn letterbox selection these ones um that's her twist sock oh she's called this selection rainy walks um so it's 80 percent super wash merino 20 percent nylon I was going to say, I think the yardage is the same. To be honest, I'm not sure I can't work it out because I've got a total yardage for all five here and an individual yardage for them individually. And that requires maths, so let's not go there. But yeah, I'm sure it'll be roughly the same yardage. So this one was called Rainy Walks. And this one was called Laurel Cannon. Gosh, they've got these nice taupey colours on the back as well. I mean, wouldn't both of these would make absolutely gorgeous socks, wouldn't they? But I don't really want to make any more socks. I have enough, so I don't know. I'll either think of another project, or maybe I will use them just for some pretty and inspiring samples. Or I kind of want to do a nice four ply crochet project, apart from this one, but with sort of different motifs of some sort. So maybe they'll go into that. I don't know, but. It was just a little treat. Anyway, stop waffling. Probably got way too much footage here. This was supposed to be a quick one. Um, so I will leave it there. I hope you are able to look after yourselves till we speak again and um, yeah, just try and cope with all this awful news as best you can. And um, yeah, what can you say? There's just no words, is there? there really isn't. But anyway, I hope if you possibly can, look after yourself and enjoy a few crafty moments till we speak again. Okay, bye-bye.